So good morning and thank you for being here today. Uh, yesterday we all learned from the Brown County District Attorney's Office that they have declined to proceed with any further uh, criminal investigation or charges involving Officer Scanandor in this critical incident from back on February 23rd. And for us, the next step in the process, just by our policy and procedure, is to conduct an administrative review of the event. Uh, what we're looking for there is policy compliance and then anything else that the situation can teach us in terms of either policy, training, equipment, or other needs that, that it highlights for us. Um, and so because of that and my role at the end of this to determine ultimately whether uh, the event was in or out of policy. I'm not going to be able to get into a whole lot of the specifics of this incident today. Um, however, you know, we've, and I only just uh, late last night received the DCI's reports from this incident. Um, and I know that there's video that has been released that um, most of us have seen. I have watched that video. And I, I will say that uh, based on what I've seen up to this point, you know, one of the, the things that I notice is this is just yet another one of those examples of the, the danger that our officers put themselves in front of every day in this line of work. You know, our police officers go out every day and they put themselves between that danger and our community. And, um, you know, that's one of the things that really stands out to me as a professional police officer about that video. Uh, it, this at least based on what I know right now, really looks like Officer Scandor was faced with a really difficult and extremely dangerous situation with almost no time to react uh, and, and performed pretty well under really difficult circumstances. Um, so uh, the other thing that I would just emphasize about this and always remind people of in these kind of situations is the human aspect of this. You know, this is a really difficult thing for anybody to go through, obviously, and police officers are no different. Um, and so, you know, we appreciate the tremendous amount of community support that we've seen for our folks as this situation has unfolded and the, the support that we received just in general. Um, this, again, is just a reminder of, of the risks that these men and women take on our behalf every day. Officer Scanandor has asked me to read a brief statement that he would like you to have, and then we'll make a copy of this available for you as well. Um, this is quoting from Officer Scanandor. He says, I have chosen this profession to help people during some of the most difficult times of their lives. I do this knowing that there can be dangerous situations. This traumatic event has greatly impacted my family and me. I appreciate the continued support that I've been receiving from our community. And again, we'll make a copy of that statement available for all of you. So with that, I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Yes, ma'am. Emily Mutesek, Fox 11. Is it common, I mean, you've seen the video, everyone's seen the video, for an officer to be shooting through his windshield and shooting out his own windows through the glass in situations like this? Well, I'm not, you know, again, I have to be careful not to get into the specifics of this incident, but just as a general... Um, as a general rule, you know, when you find yourself in that kind of threat, um, there is no textbook. There, you know, we obviously teach to a very high standard, but one of the, the things about police training is that we're able to provide training in a very sterile environment, but we are not able at all to predict all of the details of the situation that that officer might find themselves in. And so, you know, we train our officers rather than, if this happens, do this. What we train our officers to do is to have a set of skills and a set of tools that they can use so no matter what happens, they have something to draw on to address that problem. Is that safe, though, to do something like that for the officer and, I guess, for anybody who might, a bystander who might be in the area? Um, I think, and again, I can't get into the specifics of this because I haven't even seen the, the reports yet. And so, you know, we, one of the things that we train is for officers when, whenever possible to consider what's beyond where they're, you know, in this, where they're shooting in this situation. Um, you know, by the time someone is firing handgun rounds through your windshield, that's already as unsafe as it's going to get. And so um, really the, the most important thing for the officer in that moment is to address that, that threat to their life. And, you know, sometimes that 
requires things like this. Brittany Schmidt with Channel 2. Kind of jumping off of that, you know, the DA put out a long list of the officer's actions, um, no criminal charges. And you talked a little bit about public officer privilege. Are you able to touch on that? And kind of to that point, you know, we see the video, we see the shots fired, we see the officer kind of go down, turn around, get back out, shoot some more rounds. And then you see the mailman drive by, you see another vehicle there. So in that perspective, in that safetyness, you know, what is going through the officer, the training, but then that public officer privilege, and forgive me, I've never been in that life and death situation and fear for my life, so. Sure. Um, well, public officer privilege is a legal term. And, you know, under the Wisconsin statutes that talk about justification for use of force, that justification is referred to using the term privilege. So that's what that means. A, a use of force that might otherwise be a criminal act if it's justified because of some, in this case, lethal threat to the officer, the, the legal term for that is privilege. And so that's why you see that term. Um, and then as far as you know, yes, that's, again, I, I can't get into what the officer was thinking in this case because I don't know that yet. Um, but, you know, those are all things that we have to think about while also understanding that there is still someone in this situation who is a lethal threat, at least to the police, if not anyone else that he encounters in that situation. And so, you know, this, this is why we invest as heavily as we do in training for some of those really critical skills that thankfully we don't have to use a lot in the public, but when we do, we absolutely positively have to get it right. Um, and I think you see um, some of the benefit of that training in this case. Andrew Muzu with NBC 26. Mm -hmm. Obviously with officer involved shootings and everything like that, is it important that every time something like this happens, that there is a media availability or do, that you guys are able to explain what happened because it's happened every single time that something like that would happen? Well, I can't say, I can't speak for every police department, but for us in, in the Green Bay Police Department, it's very important that we share information with the public as we can. And it's challenging because there's a balance that we have to strike. Um, in this state, there's a legal requirement that an outside agency conduct an investigation to uh, make sure that no crimes have occurred. Uh, and we have to respect the integrity of that investigation. And so there's always that balance in any one of these situations that we do where we try to release as much information as we can to satisfy the public's right to know what we're doing while also not doing something that might compromise an investigation or that administrative review that comes later. But to your question, yeah, it's, it's one of the most important things about policing in a democracy is that our community understands what we do and and what happened in events like this to maintain that public trust. Brittany Schmidt, Channel 2. Um, is Officer Skenador back on the payroll, or is he on administrative leave, or does he wait until this other investigation is complete? So Officer Skenador is back to work uh, in an, an administrative capacity, and when the return to work from a critical incident is looks different for every every officer who's involved in it. Um, and so one of the most important things that we consider in working with the officer on when the right time is to come back to work is how they're doing and how they're processing something that for anyone who goes through it would be a, you know, a life-altering experience. Um, it's typical in, in all of these cases we will have the officer out on administrative leave for at least some period during the investigation. Um, and then once we determine that it's appropriate for them to come back, we'll work with them and kind of integrate them back into the work. But they're never, they're always on the payroll uh, because there's no presumption just because there was a use of force that they did anything wrong. We have a responsibility to examine the facts and circumstances surrounding the incident to make sure, as I said, our policies were followed and, that, and learn anything that we can from it. But he's, he's always been on the payroll. What, what is offered to an officer involved in this type of situation? So we are blessed here in Green Bay with some really good uh, employee assistance and, and mental health and wellness resources. We work with a local group here that provides a contract service where our, all of our employees can go get mental health help pretty much as soon as they need it, whenever they need to, on a completely confidential basis. Um, and we always engage with our, our mental health professionals. We make sure that they're, they're 
trained in working with police and first responders so that, you know, there's some, some capability there. Um, and so, uh, you know, obviously for any of our members who's involved in, in a, a critical incident, those resources are always available. Okay, we have time for one more question. Emily from <clears throat> Fox 11. When, how long does your um, investigation usually take? And then at what point after that is it determined whether or not Officer Skinnendor goes back to, I guess, his old job, non-administrative work? At this point, in, in, it's a it's a case by case analysis. At this point, you know we're ready whenever Officer Scanador is for him to resume his work out in the community. Um, and again, like I said, just when you've been through something like this, for each individual, it's it's just a different equation of how you process that and when you're ready to go back into that role. But there's nothing at this point in our process administratively preventing him from from going back out to work in the community. Uh, these administrative reviews, it really just depends on how complex the situation is. I've seen some of these take months. I've seen some of them take weeks. Um, and here in the state of Wisconsin, because we have an outside agency conduct the investigation in cases like this, we are only just now getting that information from them. Um, and so that, in, in, under that system, that lengthens the process because now our professional standards investigators will be able to get into that and, and really get started. They roll out to the scene and they do what they can there, but then really there's, you know, until we can get information from whoever is doing the, the detective's investigation, it's really hard to get that started. Just a quick follow-up to that, just to make for clarification. So he doesn't need to wait for the internal investigation, the administrative investigation to be done to go back to patrol, and then when you do complete that investigation, the lessons learned, will you release that publicly? We will release publicly as much as we can. We have to be mindful of the balancing test of public records law where, you know, our employees also have a privacy interest in some of these, some of these cases, but, you know, that is something that we would have to work through on what's appropriate to release publicly. Um, Typically, you know, I've always believed that what we can release, we will. Okay, that'll be all. Please watch for the follow-up email with Dr.